Hello class and welcome back to AP Computer Science Principles. Today we are beginning Unit 3 in Code.org's 2023 to 2024 AP Computer Science Principles curriculum. So if you are watching this video, you know, years down the line, there may be some discrepancies, but I think this video series will still help those of you who are trying to learn how to code for the first time using Code.org. So let's go ahead and start with this pre-unit pulse. Question number one, what are your top five most used apps currently? And if you can, I do suggest you go ahead, pause the video, take a look at your phone and look at what are the apps that you have used the most over the past, let's say week or two weeks and how many hours have you used each of those apps? I do this with my classes every year and some of them are often very, very surprised at how much time they're spending looking at TikTok or Instagram or that sort of thing. Uh, for me, I would say like Audible, um, Twitter, probably Facebook Messenger because I'm old. Anyway, moving on. When you're done, hit submit. Question number two, pick an app and describe how it benefits you. Be as specific as you can. Well, for me, I'm gonna go ahead and choose Google Maps because I have a very bad sense of direction personally. So Google Maps helps me get from where I am to where I'm going. And also it routes me around traffic when it happens. If there's a big accident, then Google, or Google Maps will try to route me around the accident so that my, my downtime is minimized. So for me, it's all about Google Maps, um, but each of you should go ahead and put in your own answer for your own app. Now describe a different app, one that would be helpful for high school students in general. Be as specific as you can. Now, this is going to be a bit controversial since I am primarily a math teacher, but I think photo math can be very helpful for high school students in general. I feel like students using it to cheat are, of course, not using it properly, but using it to check answers and check processes and maybe see where you went wrong on a problem, I think that photo math has the potential to be very, very useful to students who are really honestly trying to learn from their mistakes. So that would be my answer, but you put your answer in there and we're moving on. So here we are at level four with a partner discuss the following. How does the user interact with the app? What is the overall purpose of this app? And who is the target audience? So I'm gonna go ahead and talk us through this one, but after that, I'm just gonna like click on everything and let you all make your own conclusions. So to start with, we're gonna hit the run button and notice when I hit the run button, this finish button comes up. So anytime you're not sure how to get to the next cell, usually if you hit the run button on whatever app is up, the finish button should show up. Anyway, the first thing we see is a toggle between English and Spanish. And it says, it's important that we all do our part to use less water. Click through this app for tips on conservation ideas. So it says, instead of using disposable water bottles, we should use reusable glass bottles. So if I click on the disposable bottle, it says no, gives us a, a sound. And then we click on the glass bottle. And it very loudly tells us that we are correct. Another way to conserve water is to take shorter showers. Try setting a timer to five minutes. It wants me to click on the timer. And there we go. Also, I can click on the duck and get a, a water sound. And then it says home and we are back to the beginning. So how does the user interact with the app? Well, by selecting options, Yes, but also by the physical act of clicking or on a phone tapping certain buttons leads to certain outcomes, right? That is how the user interacts with the app. They, they put their finger on their phone or they use a mouse to click on buttons. What is the overall purpose of this app? Well, I think we can all kind of agree that it's a water conservation app. It's right there in the title. And uh, who is the target audience? When I have asked students this question in the past, pretty much all of them say everyone. It is specifically aimed at folks that aren't currently conserving water, but also the message is good for basically everyone. 
okay? So that's the level of thought that is expected in these kinds of questions. When they say discuss a thing with a partner, you really want to actually discuss the thing with a partner. Um, that is how you are going to progress in this class. So we're going to move on to the next one. Here we are at level five. With a partner, discuss the following. How does the user interact with the app? What is the overall purpose of the app? And who is the target audience? Now this time, I am not going to provide any commentary. I am just going to go through and click a bunch of different buttons. Here we go. on your own or with a partner, please be considering these three questions. And if you're in my class, you should definitely be writing these down on the worksheet I should have given you. Moving right along. Same deal, same three questions, just gonna go through the app, let's get to it. Here in beautiful sunny Hamilton, our residents are working hard to add beauty to our city streets. The current plan, blah, 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 blah. Trying to click other things just in case. Ah, it's telling us where we should and should not put trash. Town is also working on improving quality of life with a garden. Nothing to click there. Back to home. Once again, same three questions. Let's move on. Okay, I think this is the last app. We're going to go ahead and talk about Foursquare. Again, same deal. How does the user interact? What's the overall purpose? Who's the target audience? Here we go. Uh, have you wanted to learn to play the fun social game of Foursquare but didn't know where to start? This is the app for you. A quick question. I guess if it's Foursquare, I assume four is correct. That was adorable. If you are testing somebody else's app, you want to make sure to click on everything. So you need four players to play Foursquare. Makes sense to me. I am not reading all of that, but I assume it is the rules of Foursquare, and then we can go back and start again. Once again, same questions, pause the video, let's move on. Ha, I was wrong, it wasn't the last one. Monarch Butterflies, same deal, let's get going. After exiting the egg, the Monarch Butterfly, now really quick, just a note on design, I don't like this right here because it's a little bit difficult to read. The white against some light background can be rough. And in AP Computer Science, you are going to be expected to have all of your text easily visible. One thing they can do is you can add a background like it does up here where it says Monarch Butterflies. But also, just as a quick tip, anytime you want to make sure that your text is visible on any background, white text black shadow. That's all there is to it. White text with a black shadow, it will be visible on anything. Um, so go with that instead of this. Click me. We've got the pupa here. And there's the butterfly. Another thing about this app that kind of bothers me is we're at the last screen here and there's no way for me to get back anywhere else except for hitting the reset button. That's like saying you have to close the app or else you're stuck on this screen forever. You'll notice that all of the previous apps had a button that said like back to home or start over or something like that. Anyway, with that in mind, same three questions, pause the video, let's move on. Okay, now we are going to go through the same exact apps but this time we're going to use a little bit more um, official like 
academic vocabulary instead of using vibes, yeah? So instead of talking about how does the user interact with the app, we are saying what are the inputs, okay? So for example, the input, clicking the Spanish button. The output, the language of all the text on the screen changes to Spanish. So also, for example, if I input clicking the English button, the output would be the language of all the text on the screen changes to English. That's the idea of, of this. So we're going to go through all of these apps again, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to have you go ahead and either go through them yourself or go back through the video because they're the exact same apps. So just watch me go through them and think what are the inputs, what are the outputs? So that's going to go for the bird quiz. That's going to go for the improvement project. Let's do an example here. Okay. One of the inputs is clicking the red button and the output is the color box on the screen changes to red. So you can get two more input output pairs just by replacing the word red with blue. Yeah. When you click the blue button, the square turns blue. When you click the purple button, the square turns purple. Same deal with the four square. Same deal with the butterflies. Finally, and I'm not going to solve this for you, we have three terms and three definitions. What would you consider each of these to be in an app? So we've got input, output and user interface. A song is played, a screen with buttons, images, and text, and the user clicks a button. Now, the nice thing about this is it won't like hide from you whether you got it right or not. If you get it wrong and you hit submit, it will tell you you have it wrong. So you can just brute force it until you get them in the right spot. But do remember what each of these mean, because input, output, and user interface are three of the fundamental terms that you're going to be using over and over and over again throughout this course. Speaking of this course, we're going to move on to lesson two, but we'll do that in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it helped a little bit, and I'll see you next time.